Now, the latest controversy at the White House revolves around family, contradicting statements, ignored concerns, and national security. The president was silent today amid new revelations about a trusted advisor. The New York Times and The Washington Post reported today that President Trump ordered that his son-in-law, Jared Kushner, get a top-secret security clearance despite concerns from his own chief of staff and intelligence officials. That contradicts what President Trump told The Times in January and what his daughter Ivanka told ABC last month. The president had no involvement pertaining to my clearance or my husband's clearance, zero. Today, White House Counselor Kellyanne Conway defended the president on Fox News. That the president has the absolute right to do what was described. Kushner had a temporary security clearance for more than a year as his background check hit delays. Some White House officials expressed concerns over his past business dealings. During the transition, after the election in 2016, Kushner sought investments from Chinese, Russian, and Qatari entities. His family's company had amassed more than a billion dollars in debt on a development in New York. He divested himself after he joined the White House. The way that good legislation should be made in Washington is when everyone's at the table, everyone's arguing, everyone's fighting. Since joining the administration, Kushner has taken on a wide portfolio, ranging from criminal justice reform to Middle East peace. Just three days ago, Kushner met with Saudi Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman, suspected of involvement in the murder of a journalist. He's also met with Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, with whom his family has ties. Kushner has had to update his federal disclosure forms at least 40 times to include contacts with foreign officials. Last year, the Washington Post reported foreign officials from four countries had discussed using Kushner's foreign and business ties to manipulate him. Today, a spokesman for Kushner's lawyer said the clearance was handled in the regular process with no pressure from anyone. But investigations into Kushner's security clearance and the president's actions are underway. House Oversight Committee Chair Elijah Cummings has threatened to subpoena White House documents about clearance protocols if they are not submitted by Monday. So what is it about Jared Kushner and his family's business that has raised questions as far back as during the 2016 campaign? Caleb Melby is part of the reporting team at Bloomberg News, keeping track of the business and its work. And Caleb Melby, welcome to the News Hour. So we know that uh, the Kushner family has been involved in, in real estate and real estate development well before Donald Trump started running for president. Tell us what that business was. Where was it? Right. Uh, long before the campaign, uh, this was a real estate family uh, that had grown up uh, um, uh, it, doing apartments in New Jersey, in Maryland. But right around, right before the financial crisis, they made a big move into New York and to Manhattan. And what that meant was they spent a record, record-breaking $1.8 billion on one particular office building, 666 Fifth Avenue here in New York. Then the market tanked, and they were sitting on a building that was absolutely drowning in debt. And that was a problem that they kind of kicked down the road for years and years, and it really started to come to a head during the campaign. So this all happened, as you said, years before Donald Trump started running for president. Why did it become an issue? Why did that de the debt keep building, putting them in a vulnerable position? How did that develop? Yeah. Uh, in 2011, they had an opportunity to refinance their debt, uh, slightly more generous terms to try and uh, help them turn things around. Uh, but they failed. And as Trump started running for president, they decided to go for a moonshot plan. And they wanted to knock their building down and build another twice as tall uh, in its place. And there weren't too many investors here in the U.S. who would even look at a plan like that. And that meant they had to go overseas. And really, the place they saw the most interest was China. Uh, and they talked to a company there, Anbang Insurance Group, and were very close to putting together a deal to save their building before the debt was due in February of this year, actually. But that fell through. Uh, they had talks with Qataris, with Saudis, uh, with a French billionaire, with a Korean sovereign wealth fund. They really went all over the globe looking for somebody to help them save this building. 
And if you've, as you've reported, uh, Caleb Melby, that was still going on just as Donald Trump was being elected president. Yes, absolutely. Uh, Jared and his family were having advanced negotiations with the Chinese firm on Bong. After that fell through and Jared uh, entered the White House, uh, his father and other members of his family and of his company continued to have conversations uh, with Qatari officials, uh, both uh, the sovereign wealth fund in that country and also uh, other private businesses there as well. Um, those conversations uh, basically led right up to the point in time when uh, Qatar's neighbors, Saudi Arabia and the mm -hmm. United Arab Emirates, uh, led a blockade of Qatar, which Trump and the administration supported, which everybody thought was odd because Qatar is historically a U.S. ally. So all of this, what all this adds up to is it would have presented uh, a real co potential conflict of interest for Jared Kushner. We, we see uh, his family having conversations with sovereign entities at roughly the same time he, in his broad mandate to oversee Middle East policy, is making decisions about those self-same countries. So we don't know. I mean, we're not being told uh, by government officials what it was that was holding up the security clearance. But we can assume that this had something serious, uh, that there was something about this that, that was related to that. Certainly there are questions outstanding about that business deal, um, even right now as we're trying to figure out exactly how that security clearance came to be. We don't know what was discussed in those meetings between, say, Jared's father and the Qataris or between Jared and the Chinese firm Anbang as President Trump was coming to power either. And that's when we talk about conflict of interest, that's really what we're talking about, right, which is having parallel private business interests and public decision-making opportunities and not quite understanding where the lines between the two blur. And as we were saying, all this while Jared Kushner has taken on the Middle East portfolio, he's meeting with the Israelis, he's meeting with the Saudis, with the Qataris, uh, and, and just a lot of question marks about where interests lie. Yeah, a a absolutely. Um, it, it, having him go and visit Mohammed bin Salman uh, right now to try and get everybody on board for his Middle East peace plan, uh, that's somebody he's developed a very close relationship with and somebody who also has control over a sovereign wealth fund, uh, the Saudi Public Investment Fund. A lot of questions around this, and uh, we will continue to ask them, and we appreciate your reporting. Caleb Melby with Bloomberg News, thank you. Thanks for having me.